Good evening, I'm Leo Green, welcoming you to Green on Green. That particular version of that tune from MGM's 1953 musical The Bandwagon has not been heard on this station for the past 15 years. Throughout the 1970s, 80s and 90s, it was the signal that the time must be 2 o'clock, the day must be Sunday, and that the presenter about to take to the Radio 2 airwaves was my father, Benny Green. Throughout a radio career that covered a wide spectrum of subjects from sport, English literature, films, music, it was Benny's Sunday show here on Radio 2 for which most remember him, where he celebrated the great and good of the American popular song and those who sung the songs. Benny sadly passed away 15 years ago this summer. Now, the purpose of this show and its partner next Tuesday night at the same time is to reflect, look back and generally celebrate Dad's radio career here at Radio 2. And, of course, play some of the cracking songs along the way. But before we revisit some of Dad's shows, let's begin with one of the many staples of his musical diet, a singer who truly represents the best place to start for any show about music. On this particular track, he just happens to be accompanied by one of the greatest big bands of all time. I would highly recommend at this point of proceedings that you turn up your radio, your laptop, tablet or mobile, and I defy you not to enjoy this. Thank you. I've got you under my skin. Frank Sinatra, accompanied by the Count Basie band, recorded live at the Sands Hotel one spring night in 1966. The song was written by the ridiculously prolific pen of Cole Porter almost 80 years ago for MGM's Born to Dance, a musical which also gave us another song which went on to become one of the great standards you'd be so nice to come home to. Now, the vital ingredients of the track we just heard, namely Cole Porter, Count Basie, Frank Sinatra are pretty much guaranteed to put a smile on your face and were, of course, mainstays of Dad's Sunday shows here on Radio 2. Sinatra especially was a singer for whom, in Dad's eyes, there simply was not enough superlatives. In fact, I can remember one night sitting and chatting with Dad with a prominent name from the world of football, who shall remain nameless now, but let's call him Bobby Robson. The former England manager asked Dad how he thought the likes of Sinatra, Nat King Cole, Tony Bennett, etc., might all line up in a kind of Premier League of singers. Having considered the question for about half a second, the old man's response was typical. Well, he said, first would be Frank Sinatra, behind him Frank Sinatra, then Frank Sinatra, followed by Frank Sinatra. Now, the point he was trying to make was that Sinatra was simply in a league completely of his own, all the other singers featured in leagues below. So for the first time in 15 years, let's hear from Benny himself, in this particular instance, discussing Frank Sinatra. The problem is this. What is Frank Sinatra? We know what he was. He was a singer, a strolling player who sang the best songs and sang them so much better than anyone else that there was never a runner-up. That's what Sinatra was. But in the process of being it, he turned into something quite different, something which makes the biographer's job impossible. Sinatra, by the application of his art and his personality, has insinuated himself into all our lives so utterly that anything any one of us says about him has to be personal, a one-to-one -one relationship, a freak situation where a remote stranger is expressing on behalf of each of us the most intimate thoughts, dreams, emotions, memories. It's quarter to three, there's no one in the place 